there's been some news out of the United Kingdom about the CAS review, which has been used to clamp down on gender affirming care in England, Scotland, and in other places. Now, the person whose name is on the document, Dr. Hilary Cass, is walking back that very review, saying now that transgender people deserve individualized care according to their individual needs and age and stage. Now, this is a far cry from what the CAS review says. For instance, the CAS review says that transgender people should be given hormone therapy at 16 years old with extreme caution, with clear rationale for not waiting until 18. And in fact, much of the interpretations of the CAS review by the leading medical authorities in the United Kingdom have judged this review to approve bans on puberty blockers and extreme restrictions on transgender care. They have even used this review to justify an inquest into 17 to 25 year old transgender care in England. Okay, so that was trans activist Erin Reed, who pisses me off because she is just one of the most uh, prominent uh, misinformation peddlers in regards to gender information or like gender medicine. Um, and you can just see this, like it's so dishonest. So on her Substack, she has this article, Dr. Cass backpedals from review, HRT blockers should be made available and tries to suggest that this is walking back from what the review itself says. Um, and it's just so dishonest. And the interview that she is citing that, that supposedly walks back the cash review is this review here. Um, Q and a with Dr. Hillary Cass from the kite trust. So this is the relevant uh, paragraph here. Um, does Dr. Cass believe puberty blockers are unsafe drugs? If so, why is it okay for them to be prescribed to cis kids and not trans kids? And then Dr. Cass says, the Cass review report does not conclude that puberty suppressing hormones are an unsafe treatment. The report, su support, the report supports a research study being implemented to allow prepubertal children to have a pathway to accessing this treatment in, in a timely way and with suitable follow-up and data collection to provide the highest quality of evidence for the ongoing use of puberty suppressing hormones as a treatment for gender dysphoria. In the data that Cash of you examined, the most common age that trans people were being initially prescribed puberty suppressing hormones was 15. Dr. Cass's view is that this is too late to have the intended benefits of suppressing the effects of puberty and was caused by the previous NHS policy of requiring a trans young person to be on puberty suppressing hormones for a year before accessing gender affirming hormones. The Cass Review report re recommends that a different approach is needed with puberty suppressing hormones and gender affirming hormones being available to young people at different ages and developmental needs alongside a wider range of gender affirming healthcare based on individual needs. So the question is, is this really, quote unquote, walking back? Is Dr. Cass backpedaling from the review and suggesting that HRT blockers should be made available? Well, what does Dr. Cass say? Dr. Cass says that uh, she supports a research study being implemented to allow pubertal children to have a pathway to accessing puberty blockers. Well, in the Cass review, that is exactly what is recommended. Um, yeah, it says the review's letter to NHS England advised that because puberty blockers only have clearly defined benefits in quite narrow circumstances and because of the potential risk to neurocognitive development, psychosexual development, and longer term bone health, they should only be offered under a research protocol. So in the review, it says they should only be offered under a research protocol. And then in the interview, Cass says that it supports offering puberty blockers during a research protocol. So no, that's not walking back anything. And then in the down here, it says that um, puberty suppressing hormones and gender affirming hormones being available to uh, young people at different ages and developmental stages alongside a wider range of gender affirming healthcare based on individual need. So when Aaron Reed says that Dr. Cass is like, walking things back um, where, you know, transgender care is based on individual needs and circumstances. Um, and this is supposed to be a, a, like walking back the claim that the option to provide hormones from age 16 uh, un, 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 under extreme caution. No, that's not a contradiction. 
because in the cash review, they talk about the need for a uh, individualized uh, care plan. Um, so that is like right up front. So they talk about an individualized care plan. Um, so they want to have a plan that addresses urgent risk, reduces distress associated with mental health issues and psychosocial stressors, co-develops a plan for, for addressing gender issues, which may involve any combination of social, psychological, or physical interventions. Um, and yeah, the, the care plan needs to be individualized to the person. Um, they should receive holistic assessment of their needs to inform an individualized care plan. So saying that they should have an individual care plan based on individual need, that's not a contradiction. That's not backpedaling. Um, and saying that uh, puberty suppressing hormones and gender affirming hormones being available to young people at different ages and developmental stages, well, that is that, that, that is not backpedaling. And that's still compatible with Dr. Cass saying that um, hormones need to be recommended with extreme caution. There needs to be a clear clinical rationale for providing hormones at that stage rather than waiting until an individual reaches 18. So yeah, because they're saying that not everyone needs to go down a medical pathway. Um, there needs to be a clear rationale, and that clinical rationale needs to be based on a individualized care plan with holistic assessment in, in order to assess whether or not that is a good approach for that person. Because the cash review says, for the majority of young people, a medical pathway may not be the best way to achieve um, their life goals. For those young people for whom a medical pathway is clinically indicated, it is not enough to provide this without also addressing wider mental health and psychosocial challenging problems. And that addressing those psychosocial problems depends on the individualized need. And offering them at different developmental stages, you, well, if you're going to offer purity blockers, you have to do it in the research protocol because the whole point is that there's not enough good evidence. So if we're going to offer them at all, we need to do so in the context of a research study so we can gather better evidence because the whole point of the cash review is to say that there hasn't been good evidence for this. So no, this is not walking back anything. Um, and Aaron Reed is so uh, dishonest, such a bad journalist, just pure propaganda, just, you know, trying to just be so ideological, trying to just like do anything to, uh, you know, dismiss the cash review, you, you know, trying to make Dr. Cass look bad for no good reason, saying HRT blockers should be made available. Yeah, blockers should be made available in a research protocol, which is exactly what she says in this interview, um, saying that HRT should be made available. Yes, HRT should be made available under extreme caution. <laughs> That's what it says, and, and made available with extreme caution. Um, and that is not incompatible with what she says in the interview. She says that, um, you know, you have to be made based on individual need. Well, the individual need um, suggests that, you know, you need a clear, a, a holistic assessment, looking at psychosocial interventions, such as therapy, reviewing their mental health problems, addressing family issues, looking at an individualistic, holistic assessment and care plan, and then gender affirming healthcare um, can be social transition because Dr. Cass in the review talks about a social transition as a medical intervention. So it's not necessarily saying that like you have to go down a medical pathway for everyone because part of the interventions, part of gender affirming care can be a psychosocial, psychological interventions um, because a lot of the problems that these children have is like mental health issues. They have psychological issues. Um, so yeah, so psychological treatment and psychopharmacological treatment to support, you know, all these comorbid mental health conditions. Um, so no, like she's, she didn't walk back anything. Um, and the recommendation is still that if you're going to offer hormones, it should be done under extreme ca caution. There should be a clinical rationale based on the stage. And the whole idea about offering them at different developmental ages and stages, yes, it, 
like the, the idea is that um, trans people were being offered puberty at age 15. Well, that doesn't fit into the original uh, idea for puberty blockers because the whole idea of puberty blockers was to prevent you from going through puberty. But by if you prescribe them at 15, that's too late. So if you're going to recommend different stages, you need to do the puberty blockers earlier, but you need to do it in a research study setting so that you can actually study the evidence with good follow-up um, because there hasn't been good follow-up in all this uh, research. So that's not a contradiction. That's not walking anything back. Um, and offering gender-affirming hormones to young people at, at different ages and developmental stages, well, you have to do that under extreme caution according to individual needs. You assess the individual needs, and some individuals don't need the medical pathway, as um, she makes clear. Not, er not everyone needs that. Some people just need psychosocial um, you know, support, and you, know, you also need to manage... Uh, um, yeah, so they're saying that um, the review would recommend an extremely cautious clinical approach and strong clinical rationale for providing hormones before the age of 18. This would keep options open during this important development, developmental window, allowing time for management of any co-occurring conditions, building of resilience and fertility pr preservation if required. So you need to build psychological resilience, you need to manage co-occurring conditions, and you need to do fertility preservation all according to individual need. So no, th this is not walking any anything back. And uh, Aaron Reed is so dishonest, such a uh, bad journalist who's just propping up this propaganda, spreading these lies, um, you know, trying to dismiss this like a uh, review uh, for purely ideological reasons. <laughs> you know, um, it's just so dishonest. Um, and and she's taken seriously as like a journalist. And and that that headline gets spread around. You know, trying to uh, you know so distrust in the cash review. Um, so I don't know. It, it's just so ridiculous. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care.